Hi everyone, welcome to the Logistics for Nonprofits webinar. I will wait 30 seconds more just to make sure that every time everybody has a chance to get here. This webinar today is the first webinar of a series. We will talk about the basics of international shipment that hopefully equip you to have better conversations with your freight forwarder. If you have any questions, if you're interested, for example, in do domestic shipping or any other topic, please feel free to reach out to us afterwards and we will make sure that we cover your topics in an upcoming webinar. Before we start, I would also give would like to give a huge, huge thank you to Natasha from Needslist. Needslist invited us to contribute to Global Refugee Week. Needslist is the world's first marketplace for communities in crisis, and we are really, really happy that we can partner with Needslist today. All right, let's get started. Today, we will talk about the five mistakes to avoid when shipping goods. At the end, there will be time for questions. You can post the questions in the webinar window that you see on the right. My name is Susie. I'm the head of Flexport.org. Flexport.org is the impact program of Flexport. Hi, everyone. My name is Kathleen, and I work with Susie on the Flexport.org team managing our programs. Why we are here today. There are over 130 million people in need of humanitarian aid. In addition, there are also many, many people who daily suffer the challenges of poverty or other crises. For the UN coordinated appeals alone, we need $25 billion to fund the programs for the people in need. Why is logistics important? 60 to 80% of those $25 billion get spent on logistics every year. Today, we hope to share advice with you that hopefully enables you to save money, but also time to make sure that the goods reach the people that really need them. Wonderful, so let's dig in. Um, as Susie mentioned, this will be kind of a basic overview of how to process an international shipment and common mistakes that are made, but please chime in with questions throughout the webinar and we will get through them at the end. So to start, in most nonprofit shipments, there is a donor and a recipient of goods. But with international shipping, additional layers of responsibility are added on top of that. So as you can see here, there are five main parties in a shipment. Let's say, for example, you're a nonprofit and you have goods that you want to donate. But just having an address of where it's going doesn't mean that you know the importer or exporter or who is responsible for clearing customs. However, the goods must always be shipped in accordance with local and national laws. Otherwise, you risk fines or worse, your shipment never making it to where it's going. On the flip side, if you receive a product donation, will, for example, will another company be running the process or clearing customs on your behalf, or do you need to act as this entity? If you do need to be that entity, you need to make sure you, compile, well, you comply with local agency requirements, such as US or EU customs. A freight forwarder is typically your partner in this process. They might be the customs broker, but it's not always the case. So what we recommend at the beginning stages of this shipment is to always remember to talk about these parties early, who is doing what, who is responsible for what, and make sure you choose your partners that will help you throughout this process. And finally, there's the carrier. Um, so you might have an ocean carrier that's actually moving your shipment. Um, you might have trucking carriers that are involved from getting it to the port or away from the port. Um, again, they'll have different roles and responsibilities and make sure you just discuss it. This shows the general life cycle and key milestones in an ocean shipment, for an example. Every step that you see here can have a different party involved and a different person responsible. A main guidance here are going to be your INCO terms. So there are about 11 INCO terms, um, each with their own meeting, application, and rules. We have a guide for you in the resource section at the end, but just to highlight it here, that they define the obligations and costs between the seller or the shipper 
and the buyer or the consignee. So again, we just recommend to clarify your responsibilities early. It's needed for the coordination of the shipment and also defines the handover of the risk. So for example, if your cargo is damaged throughout one of these key points in the shipment, depending on the INCO terms, that person will be responsible for managing that damage, depending on the INCO term that you selected. A good freight forwarder should always catch it if you're selecting the wrong one. So for example, some INCO terms only apply to ocean shipments, some apply to air. Um, but if it's never discussed or if you're never talking about it from the beginning, then you again can run into extra costs or delays. Once you clarify kind of the parties, the second mistake is not to share every piece of information that is impo important to get your pricing. So what are the key components for getting a quote? We recommend to provide the mode that you want to ship your goods with, detailed cargo information like the weight and the dimensions, the freight service, do you want to get the shipment to the port and then pick up it yourself with your partners or to door, the Inco terms that we just discussed, the detailed origin and destination address, and if there are any hazmat goods. It is important to share those details because otherwise your free forwarder will make assumptions. And there are two issues with you know, making assumptions. Number one is if your free forwarders make different assumptions, you will not be able to compare the prices that they give you if you compare different, different service providers. And the second problem is, of course, the freight forwarder makes assumptions such that they don't lose money. But let's say, right, they calculate based on the weight that they have and not the dimensions, a very generous price. If they move the shipment and it turns out that it's cheaper, they might not give you the money back, right? It's kind of the profit that they keep. So make sure that there's either a way that you can regularly update your quote before you book it or that you get all the information before you request the pricing. It's also important to remember that you budget more money than just the amount on the quote. There are certain items that can't be quoted. For example, some customs charges, there might be exceptions during the shipment life cycle, such as tracking waiting time at the port because there's congestion and some insurance amounts that have to be paid separately. Wonderful. So with that, once your shipment starts to move, you're going to have many documents exchanged and required throughout the shipment. So we'll go over some key ones. Here you'll see the three main documents in the shipment. Um, to quickly review them, your bill of lading, it will define the shipper and the consignee or who takes ownership at destination. Throughout the shipment, the bill of lading acts as somewhat of a contract or a permission to own the goods. So having all that information correct is really important. The next one is the commercial invoice. So that will tell you the actual value of the goods. So it has things like the unit value, the count, and the description. It must always have your complete supplier and consignee information, including where the, the country where the goods are coming from. The packing list will always match the product information on the commercial invoice, and it's important that you have those product details listed out. So why is this important? Um, in Puerto Rico, for example, so many goods had to be destroyed or actually sent back because the documents weren't correct. So they were held up at customs, um, and those goods that were donated never made it to the people that needed them. So the consequences can really be tremendous and can you know, ruin your shipments. A good freight forwarder will check for you and highlight any problems that they see, but ultimately you're responsible for those documents and making sure that they're accurate. So as you're doing this, ask questions, ask about specific requirements for a country. So for example, the EU or the US will have country specific documents that are required or shipment specific. So even if you're shipping hand sanitizer, that can count as hazardous material and require its own specific documents. If a disaster hits in a region that you've never worked in, there might be specific requirements for those. So again, start that conversation early, make sure you know exactly what you need to do. Number four, not setting expectations up front with your partners. Especially if a crisis hits, right, and there's not a lot of time, we would still recommend to really highlight what the key dates are. 
For example, if you work with a company who's donating goods, then the most important date might be the pickup date, right? Because they have to clear the warehouse. On the other hand, um, especially in the first um, 48 to 72 hours after a disaster, it's important that goods get there as soon as possible. So just be clear about the requirements is extremely important such that your partners know what they should prioritize for. They pick the fastest mode, right? Or is there time depending on the type of goods that are being shipped so that there can be a mix of modes that can be applied to your shipments? And you should ask yourself, how are exceptions managed? How do you learn about them? Can you track your shipment started? status. Do you know where the container is and what is actually in the specific container that is about to arrive? Who is making the last minute delivery? How does the handover work? When do you have to pay as an organization? Are there any approval processes that you have to make aware of, right? Let's say every 30 days your green room is meeting and kind of approving builds, right? Make sure that your freight forwarder allows for that. And then the last question is if the cargo is damaged, how does the insurance process look like? There are companies that offer technology. We would highly recommend to look out for those solutions, like Needlist, who offers a marketplace, or also Flexport, who's providing great analytics and systems for free to, for you to use. Wonderful. And then the last mistake is just not using your nonprofit status. Um, so there are a lot of benefits that come from being a nonprofit in a shipment. So you always want to talk to a customs expert from the beginning. Um, some countries will actually let you waive the duties for donations going to a nonprofit. Again, like everything else, there are very country specific rules. Um, you might have to have certain receipts and documentation. You might need to be registered in a certain way. So talk about it, waive it from the beginning. But if you can save those costs, that means you have more cost in your programs to deliver your services. Be really careful on your documents. Um, so in the US, for example, even if you are shipping goods that were donated at no cost to you, you still have to declare the fair market value on the documents. So if they're worth $5 if you were to sell them, you have to put five as their value. And finally, always advocate that you are a nonprofit and that you're doing good. Um, for example, many of our partners at Flexport will discount services for disaster relief or for regular good causes. So always ask, it's worth trying, um, and you might get a discount because of it. So here's the summary of the five mistakes to avoid when shipping goods. Number one, not defining your involved parties. Make sure that you know who's responsible for what. Two, not sharing every piece of information for the quote. The more detailed information you have, the better the estimate from your freight forwarder will be. Make sure that you know what's included in the quote. Is it an all-in rate or are there any charges that might occur later? Really try to understand what you're presented with. Number three, not checking your documents for compliance. We want to make sure that your goods arrive, that they're not held up in customs, and reach the people in need as soon as possible. Four, not setting expectations up front with your partners. There's a lot of technology out there. Make sure that your service partner knows what they're optimizing for, especially the date and the type of products that you're shipping. And lastly, not using your nonprofit status. There are many benefits of being a nonprofit. And when you highlight your status, hopefully you can also save money. Flexport is a licensed freight forwarder. We offer ocean, air, trucking services. We also offer custom services. We have an impact program that is called Flexport.org. And our program focuses on reducing global carbon emissions as well as providing low-cost logistic services for nonprofits, but also companies that donate product. What does it mean in practice? We offer pro bono supply chain consulting, so if you have any questions, you can reach out to us. We also ship at a discount, so every shipment that is dedicated to a greater cost will be moved automatically at a discount. And lastly, we can also help out with donations. Many of our clients would love to help. So if you're an organization that is managing a program and you need goods, we can also help out with that. Wonderful. And Flexport has a lot of resources that are readily available to you. Um, so in the slide deck that we will send out after this, you can link out to our Flexport Help Center. It has many different documents, many different guidance um, 
for example, like I mentioned earlier, there's a guide to INCO terms and kind of what all of them mean, how to choose the right one, um, how to consign your bill of lading correctly. There's a template for commercial invoices to make sure they're correct. And then Susie and myself are always here. So please feel free to get in touch with us. Flexport.org offers pro bono consulting. Um, so you can email ngo at flexport.com or visit us at flexport.org to find out more. We now have 10 minutes for questions. Wonderful. So it looks like there's one in so far. Um, and everyone, please feel free to send in questions. There's nothing too small. I know we went over a lot in a short time. This first one is asking, how do you recommend evaluating what it's worth spending money on shipping for and what isn't worth it? That's a great question. Um, so we ran into this with Puerto Rico, actually. We had someone that wanted to donate goods to Puerto Rico to help with the disaster relief. It was a really big shipment. It was right after it hit. And we ran all of the numbers, did the analysis, and essentially it was going to take a really long time and it was going to be really, really expensive because of everything going there and all of the you know, roads that weren't be able to run on and everything like that. Um, so what we recommended that it was actually more cost efficient and had a bigger impact to donate it domestically. So to someone in the US and avoid spending that extra money and actually get the goods where they could be sent. Especially for the goods donated, right? So like if a company is listening in, I would recommend it's great that you wanna help, but maybe your good is not needed right now, right? Make sure that you check in with a nonprofits partner who actually know the needs on the ground and that we ship goods that are ready to use. Just sending a package doesn't help. What we heard is, you know, if goods arrive and it's not really sent to nonprofit or nonprofit didn't really request those goods, oftentimes they can't be put into use. Regarding shipping, we would highly recommend to pay for insurance. I think that's a very important item. Um, just because, you know, the nature of logistics, there can always be exceptions. I think that's definitely worth it. I would always request a very detailed quote to, to really understand the costs. Agreed. And then for the mode, right, there's a huge price difference if you consider, let's say, air shipments versus ocean shipments. So really try to figure out what is the difference in transit time, right? What is different for how long does it take to move the goods there versus the price difference and see if you can reach a mix by planning in advance. Of course, for disaster is really hard, but oftentimes there's also a longer recovery period. And if you have a partner that you can engage early with, also just like build relationships early so that you have figured out most of the questions, it just saves a lot of costs if you avoid any misunderstandings. You know, any holdings and customs, they're really expensive. You know, we want to avoid any fines. So just like being in conversations early, I think is the most important part for really saving money. Great. Um, and the next question that's come in is we've had people giving us customs declarations in languages that we don't speak. What is the best way to handle that? So I think it depends on the partner you're working with. Ideally, you're working with the freight forwarder. So it's if you're like an individual, you can also declare customs by yourself without having a license. If you work with a customs broker that is working on behalf of someone else, they have to have a license. What we do, we often work with partners on the ground. It's one really important to be aware of changing regulations that happen. Um, and in many countries, they happen frequently. And the second one is also just like to check kind of the languages. So really engaging people on the ground or work with companies that can provide the service is really, really important. Thank you. One more has come in. Um, what do you recommend if cargo is damaged during a shipment? What's the best thing to do? Um, that's a really great question and something that unfortunately happens a lot in shipping. The very first thing you do if you find that your cargo has been damaged is to escalate it to your partner. So whether it's your freight forwarder or your carrier that delivered it, always make sure you're sending pictures, documenting, doing as much as possible right away. 
Many carriers have just a 24 to 48 hour window to report insurance claims. So doing it as soon as possible will get you the best chance at getting that money back. Because again, that's the most important part of your shipment is actually the cargo that arrives. And then I see one last question. What are the advantages of technology you mentioned except for tracking? So again, we think that visibility is a really, really important advantage. But the second one that I would like to highlight is analytics, right? We know that nonprofits oftentimes operate on a tight budget. For example, at Flexport, we digitize all your documents and that allows you to really assess your freight spend in real time. You can see what is the average transit time, how are your containers utilized, right? Is there any way you can make improvements and based on your analytics, we can also provide consulting for how to improve your supply chain. It also might help with messaging, right? Usually in logistics, there are like a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails back and forth, and you have to write, find the right email, with the, right, the latest version of the document, right, that you want to submit. If you use a platform or technology, it can help you to have everything in one place and really simpl simplify communications which is especially important if you have to operate on really fast timelines, right? Help people in need or just like clarify questions. We want to make sure that you don't have the hassle with customs and figuring out logistics. That, that should be our job. And so hopefully, right, you have a place where you can ask a lot of questions to make sure that you address all the points we just discussed. Great, we don't see any further questions. Again, if you have some afterwards, please feel free to reach out to us. We really thank everyone for joining. Thanks again to Needs List. Have a wonderful day.